Hi everyone, this is Coach Keita Dube, and I'm back with one more topic, which is a, a very important topic for all of us to understand because we do get confused between the three Ps, which I'll be talking today, and those are um, pleasure, passion, and purpose. So how to understand the differences between these and how they are interrelated as well. So let's get started. And uh, if you have not subscribed to any of my channels, please do so. I'm uh, on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and uh, looking forward for your, all your encouragement. Thank you for that. So let's get started. So what are three Bs, right? So today we'll be um, talking about them and um, how we should know about them so that we don't get confused about uh, them. All right, let's start with the first one. The first one is pleasure, right? So what is a pleasure? We all know that we can indulge ourselves in pleasures. For instance, some people like to dance, some people like to paint, some people like to write, some people like to go out and play. So there are all different types of pleasures you can indulge yourself in, which gives you or brings you to the feeling of feeling happy, satisfied, and, and, and enjoying that activity. Now, what is a passion? Now, passion is a very strong and barely controllable emotion. So when I say it's very strong and barely controllable, because let me give you an example. For instance, you're sitting in a place and um, let's say you are in your office chair and uh, you are in a meeting or something, uh, a serious environment, right? And all of a sudden you remember from your childhood that, oh, wow, the painting I made that time, or it was a painting of a beautiful tree or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So that is an uncontrollable feeling of something you just love doing from your childhood. And that is known as a passion. It is a very strong feeling. It is, it is not that subtle like pleasure, like, like let's say you're in a group of friends and you say, let's go out for, um, you know, play some game or something. And you just say, yeah, yeah, let's do that. You know, I like doing that. So that's the pleasure. But um, the passion feeling is extremely strong in you. It's a strong emotion in you, which would bring out your attention definitely for uh, some time. And what is the purpose? It is the reason for which something is done, created, or which something exists. So that strong feeling, I would show you the relationship and between passion and purpose in my coming slides, that these are very um, strong feelings uh, from where your purpose is basically born. Now, what is the purpose? It just has to be one. It has to be a, something which you feel you have an urge to do it for yourself and for the community and for the people. So it is something which you do it uh, not only for yourself, but you have a, a big urge to take all the people around you as well and move forward with it. So what is pleasure? Let's go in details. Let's understand what pleasure is. So pleasure driven is something, pleasure is an emotional core of your sense of aliveness. Of course, when you uh, go out with friends, when you do or indulge yourself in a, a pleasurable activity, you feel alive, you feel good. You feel um, kind of, you know, there's a feeling of happiness. There's a feeling of in, uh, kind of having a joyful feelings around it. Moreover, it is the primary motivator in our lives. And yes, it's a motivator because anything you like doing, anything you love doing is like a motivator, right? So you like doing it more, you like uh, indulging yourself into it more. So of course, it becomes a good motivator in your life. So in healthy cycles, the higher the brain chooses pleasures that are good for survival of individual and the greater community. So in, in, in a very healthy environment or in a very healthy cycle, if you choose a pleasurable activity, which is good, not only good for you, but it is good for the whole community, it's a healthy cycle, right? Um, you can also get indulged in unhealthy activities and still they're pleasurable, right? For instance, sometimes um, drinking and um, taking unnecessarily drugs and all those. So those are still very pleasurable activity for some people, but they are unhealthy cycles. We'll talk about that right now. So in unhealthy cycles, however, the system can get hijacked with imbalances, whether genetic stress induced or chemical. I just explained it to you like 
you still can get pleasurable uh, feelings from very unhealthy activities as well. So it could be uh, some kind of imbalances which you are having in your mind and uh, that could result from any genetic, any stresses you're facing in your life, or it could be chemical, for instance, drugs, uh, uh, and they could be uh, chemically affecting your brain activity. Number two, sensual pleasures. Now, pleasures could be uh, defined in different forms. So the second one is essential. Sensual pleasures include the taste of food when you eat something and you're, you're finding it really, really delicious. So you are experiencing that uh, food in its totality in your mouth. So that becomes a sensual pleasure because you're tasting it, right? The touch of a dew spangles rose. When you touch a rose, it could be a beautiful experience in itself. And now you are using all your senses, uh, the primarily with, the, with your hand, the touching of it, or a lover's embrace and the sight of an in um, arrestingly beautiful face or a great piece of art. So when you can see when you're in your pleasurable activity is making you uh, pay your attention in, in your senses and you're able to see, taste or touch or smell or uh, feel any of those activities, that means it's a sensual pleasure you're getting from that uh, particular activity. Third one, the pleasure of inspiration and creativity. This is an important one because people have a hard time of understanding why this, this could be uh, a primary focus of so many people when they are into their creativity zone, as we call it. So when you're in state of a genuine creative inspiration, right? Like all of a sudden, like, uh, especially with the artists they have, uh, you might find them in not in zone and they would not make or create anything that day. But uh, sometimes they would definitely use the word, oh, today I'm in zone. I can think I can make more than one painting. So this is how it works. So you're connected to the creative force and you don't know what it is that, and some people call it zone. You might have heard the word zone for it. So to be creatively inspired is to enter a zone where ideas, movements, words, music flow through you. So... In other words, if, if a person into a zone and they're trying to create something, so they are channeling all those things, whatever uh, they are coming from the greater force, they don't know what it is, but they are going to be channeling it and then putting it down into whatever the creative endeavor they have in, in their hands. So it's like you're getting, uh, and, and some people, they call it as a download. It's like, okay, all of a sudden they have uh, an idea while sleeping or uh, all of a sudden they were not doing uh, like any activity and they get an idea. So you might have examples of those people, right? So they, they get in their ideas and their dreams. They talk about, oh, I found a solution for so-and-so. Oh, I, I just saw my painting or I just saw my future house or some of those things on those lines. So nobody knows where, where is it coming from, but they are definitely into a zone of accepting and downloading those ideas and channeling into whatever their wish to pursue. The pleasure of a true creativity comes from the fact that it connects you directly to yourself, to the innate creativity of the universal consciousness itself. Yes, that's what I was just explaining to you, that it, 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 you don't know what it is, right? You don't know how, where is it coming from? You don't need to know the source or anything. It could be your own higher self, as some people call it, intuition, higher self, God, um, any name you want to give it to it. So the, the creative, when you're in the creative zone, you are uh, somehow connecting either to yourself or to the higher consciousness where it's coming from. So that's what the power of pleasure and that can give you immense pleasure so you feel really happy and you feel very uh, content with what you just done or what you have just created so let's move on to the passions we talk about passions but here before I move on to passions I really wanted to clarify what the difference between passions and hobbies because a lot of people get confused they think their hobbies are their passions and the passions are their hobbies but that is not the case so let me go one by one a hobby is something you enjoy doing for fun and in your free time so hobby is something you you have a pattern of doing it um um 
like whenever you are free you know you like for instance you don't want to get bored you indulge yourself uh, okay let, let me write something let me as people who are into writing they would say oh let me write few lines you know they they in, they would like to uh, indulge in that is the topic they are working on and if they have a free time that's a hobby but whereas passion is something that is inside of you and with you all the time something you feel compelled to keep engaging with even without external rewards such as compensation and recognition see that is amazing see so see the difference because a hobby could be something where you want to get recognition as well but passion is you it's a, it's a second nature of yours you cannot take out a passion from a person you can take out a hobby from a person and put a new hobby into that person but you cannot take out a passion from a person passion is you it's a natural state of yours it, it is who you truly are if you um, get into understanding of it you know i hope i'm making it very clear to you guys it's it's very important to understand because some people say oh that's my hobby very casually please don't do that anymore understand the difference between them a hobby is something where you're just doing it at a like you have a free time but passion is like you are 24 7 with it it is with within you it is something it could there could be a greater chances that you might not recognize it because something you did it in your childhood and completely forgotten about it and all of a sudden one day when you are in your um let's say 50s 60s you all of a sudden realize oh my gosh i used to do that oh my gosh i used to dance or something so that is very um I mean, I, I would say that's a very real scenario with the people. That's what really happens. But you cannot take it out from you. It is inside you, you know. Like I tell you, um, one of my case studies, I had a client. She was 70 years old. And uh, 50 years back in her age, she used to write a lot. Till 20 years of age, from she was telling me from 16 years to 20 years, she used to write a lot. And she used to write beautiful poetry. Um, and she used to talk about the weather. And she was very fascinated with the weather patterns and rains and uh, snow and everything and she used to capture each moment beautifully and she used to write it in a journal long long time back once she started coming to me she was um, of course number one very unhappy with the life even though she was um, you could see from outside that she was quite financially settled she had a job she did everything she you can think of as a person who would achieve but there's something was missing in her life so we started doing the sessions with her and we wanted to find out what is going on with her and we realized that 50 years back she used to write a lot and she used to do beautiful poetry and she used to uh, write it on weather patterns and rain was her uh, biggest inspiration and she used to do and then I got her a journal and I said you will not write anything else Tomorrow, go back and till the next session we meet, please, every day, write something, whatever you want, whether it's a sunshine, it's a, if rain comes, that's great. And she started writing. And believe you me, she had such a great moment of her life. She said something which I had, um, I had completely forgotten about myself. And now she's very happy. And of course, she's enjoying her uh, newborn, uh, I would say not newborn, uh, new reactivated uh, talent um, in her. And she's thoroughly enjoying life. Each day is becoming a, a blissful, uh, you know, enjoyment of like just writing a few lines and just sharing it with friends. That's, that's giving her so much of joy. So these are some of the examples. So passion is something like that. Passion. Okay. Passion gives every person happiness and enthusiasm. We all know that because when you are uh, operating from a very passionately involvement of yourself with something, any activity or anything or a person or anything, you would see that you're automatically in that zone uh, where your connection is different, you know, where everything around you uh, is kind of having a different um, impact on you. So let's see, oh, how can you find your passion? Like so many people in come ask me, what should I do? What should I do to find my passion? Uh, the other option is, of course, uh, 
you can uh, do it of your own but these are some of the things we can do it these are just 10 steps you but you have to take one thing at a time you don't have to uh, totally immerse yourself into all right I need to do this first or something and I have to do it all no please don't do that passion does not work like that passion has to be done very diligently if you are interested in finding out what your passion is now so create like for instance create a personal vision statement like whatever it is it should be other than your the regular activity you are doing for instance if you are in profession whatever you're doing it has to be different from that determine Determine your values. Yes, you have to be very clear about your values. What, what have you valued so far? Literally, you need to know your values very well. And um, then one of the videos I'll take deep into values in the future, because you have to understand what your values are, what you really, uh, truly, you think you value in your life. It could be anything. It could be, you can take it from a a thing to a person to a place you know you, you need to have a clarity on that find find your truth not so when i say truth is like um since we have we get so much influenced uh, these days with the environment we live in and the surroundings so you have to find your truth like for instance some people uh don't like to lie right they don't they don't see a reason to lie in their life so hold on to your truth it's, it's not easy, I know, um, but it's just like your truth, because if you don't like to lie, you don't like to, you don't, uh, you like to tell the truth, you like to be honest, you like to be honest. So you have to literally, I know it's not going to be easy, but you have to practice some of it um, on the daily basis. Make a list of things you love to do. Yes, absolutely. This is one of the favorite exercises, and this is where you should uh, truly begin yeah, into your journey of finding out what your passions are do the things what you love to do now they might not be one that's fine in the beginning your list could be super long it's all is good don't don't uh, get you know disheartened oh my gosh i love so many things yes you can love so many things but passion will definitely uh, take you in, into a different path so we'll talk about more assess the things you don't love you see the next one i was very important that you have to assess what you don't like and you have to be, again, very firm on it. I mean, if it's something you don't like, you have to say, no, I don't like it. And you have to believe in it that you don't like it and the reason behind it, right? So let's say if somebody says, I like um, red roses and you say, no, I like orange roses, but you should not ever get influenced by the person who says who likes red roses because your mind can play tricks on you. And sometimes it may say, oh yeah, the red roses are also pretty, you know, something like that. But I encourage you not to do, do that because then somewhere you are going to be losing your own identity. So don't lose your identity while doing these things. Acknowledge your strengths and achievements. Yes, of course, you have to be very positive uh, towards yourself, <laughs> not to others, but definitely to yourselves. Of course, you're talking about yourself, you're dealing with your values, you are, uh, you're trying to find out your passion and things like that. You have to be very truthful, truthful, you know. I mean, you cannot just say, uh, okay, I can let it go this time. Probably I'll do it next time. No, no, you cannot do that. Practice journaling. Yes, you should practice journaling because you would find once you start journaling, after like months or years, you would say everything was different. There might be some things which could still remain the same, which is fine, but you will see that there could be so many mm, different uh, probably your thinking pattern change or something happened, you'll see, you can always go back and see how you have evolved, literally. Embrace a mindfulness practice. Of course, when you're writing about uh, yourself or you're writing about your feelings in journal, just be more mindful. Just take a few deep breaths and just start writing it. And just, just if, even if you have to close your eyes, just, just take another set of deep breaths and you have to get into a space where you are feeling yourself, where you're feeling everything, what you're doing, right? So you cannot just do it abruptly, these exercises. Seek guidance from a coach. Yeah, I do write that because it's not that easy because this is just a few steps I have uh, telling you over here, but there could be more than these. So you have to get a coach. A coach would definitely help you out to, you know, get through this more smoothly because there'll be times your mind will be resisting it a lot. Like why you're doing it? What are you trying to find out now? What is the need and things of, 
of that nature. So you definitely get in touch with the coach and I'm here, of course. Um, and you can always contact me on this one. Surround, surround yourself to people with similar passions. Now, once you're kind of getting an idea what you really, really, um, you think from inside you like. So you need to develop a habit uh, to get into those networking areas where you surround yourself with a similar passion. For instance, somebody likes uh, singing, right? And uh, so what you could do, uh, you start uh, joining like free clubs where there's a free vocal classes or something like that. You should start doing that because there might be a possibility that even that is not your passion. So you have to see and, you know, basically uh, you have to put a check mark to it that this is what is holding me in and this is what I'm pursuing for a long, long time. So that's how passion works. Because I, as I told you, it's a strong feeling. It's not that a mild feeling. It's a pretty strong emotion you're dealing with here. So passion leads to purpose. Wow, what an interesting combination because not many people understand that. Once you get a clarity in your life about your passion, this is what you love doing. This is who you truly are. And this is this is just like I said, it's, it's, it's a second nature to you. It's not like something externally you're looking forward to get validation for. And, uh, and that leads to the purpose. Now we'll talk about purpose in details just, after this so passion is about what what you love doing what you are right purpose is, purpose is why and why are you doing it how the, your passion can lead to a, a purpose and more meaningful in your life so that you can deliver it to the community with more confidence you can be passionate about different things but purpose is usually singular and focused of course it has to be right when you're uh, working with your passion, uh, you can still, I mean, can have different numbers to it, but there could be something which you, you would find which will lead to your purpose and that has to be focused. For instance, some people say, oh, I'm devoting my life to taking care of children, you know, um, and who are like anything. Else. So I am devoting my life. Uh, you might find some leaders devoting their life to taking care of any movement they get uh, connected to. Like for instance, uh, some would say, oh, I'm getting connected to, you know, the freedom movement or something like like that so this is the the purpose becomes one and purpose is like I said I'll be talking to you about it more it's just one singular focus and it is you and um, you means along with a lot of people it's for community as well it's for your highest good and good for everyone around you well passion is something that excites you lights a fire of your emotions inside of you right when you talk about your passion your whole um, body language changes you you are in different zone even while you're talking about your passion right um, and uh, you are able to comfortably uh, converse in your uh, passionate statements or you you people can see that you when you talk or when you do something you're so passionate about the things you're talking about right so people say oh wow that you, you sound so passionate about it so you can it, everything lights up about your whole I would say whole aura lights up you know when you're talking about with passion purpose, purpose is the driving reason behind those emotions so those emotions like see you love to paint right and uh, you your eyes they they light up when you talk about painting but purpose would be when you start painting for a cause you know like you start contributing to the society in a way where you feel so good about it you feel that you have a talent and where you can share your talent with the people and uh, they can get benefit out of it as well so that's where the it leads to a purpose now Purpose. Let's talk about purpose, right? So do you have a sense of purpose? I just wanted to touch bases on that. How does this purpose thing works? For decades, uh, psychologists have studied how long-term meaningful goals develop over a span of our lives. The goals are the 
that foster a sense of purpose are the ones that can potentially change the lives of other people, like launching an organization, researching the disease or teaching kids to read. So like I said, the purpose has a very different meaning to it. It's very different from anything you do, right? It's different from your profession or your career you are in. It, it has that potential that you have that urge inside you basically to transform people's lives somewhere and in in a very intentional way you know like you have an intention to that that you want to do that you know it's it's like when you do a job even though you are providing a service to that but that does not resonate with you but for a purpose it has a different um, understanding you carry within you like okay i'm going to be doing this i'm going to be working for this cause it could be anything it could be a small or a big but you just know that you have a very good intention towards why you are doing that and that is purpose that is not your regular thing right so a job or any small projects you take in so for this you have a lot of driven uh, inten intentions, emotions behind it, like and emotions are stronger emotions if they are coming from the passion side. Purpose. How to find purpose in your life? Now, so many people ask me, what is purpose? Because purpose is a very, um, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. You know, like if I, if I tell you something, oh, it's going to take a month or 30 days, you'll have your purpose. No, I'll be not going to be you know like uh, truthful about it because it does not it takes a while for different people it's different some people take longer time to understand because right like I said you have to go through the series of understanding what your pleasures are what your passions are and then you lead to purpose right so there's a long journey you have to cover before you reach to the purpose are you struggling to discover your purpose a lot many people are so they are living uh, like they say, my life is not fulfilling, even though I have everything in my life. Uh, I don't see a meaning of uh, in living this life. I don't see, you know, they're not happy. They, they find themselves somewhere lacking, even though they are um, materially quite successful, or probably they are successful in all the areas of life. That may be because you feel isolated from other people. And here's how you can overcome that. So, you know, when somebody says they have not found their purpose, and that's a big statement, and let's say they have spent good 60 years of their life on this planet, it literally means that um, they have not found the connection of uh, being a human and getting connected to other human beings, you know, just they have not found that that symbol thread, which uh, which was missing from their life, where they could feel connected to other people in very, very fulfilling way, you know, where they feel that uh, they have done um, a big contribution to the society. That's the only thing missing, because they have uh, probably earned everything in their life. Uh, it could be a name, fame, money, or relationships. It could be all of those, you know, all the literally uh, things. But once they come to me and they say something is missing, something is I don't feel good about, and I don't know what it is, and they don't even know about it. So we can sit down and we go through a long list of things and try to find out what's going on in their life. So here are some of the six ways to overcome isolation and discover your purpose in life. So these are just some of the things you could do. I mean, um, you can pick one of them which resonates with you or you can do all. As I always say, you don't have to force yourself or doing everything all the time. One thing is very important when you are working on yourself and trying to know what is going on and especially you're trying to find out your purpose in your life, start working with something which literally resonates with you. You know, that'll help you a lot. So number one, read. Read again. <laughs> it's a, it's a, not it's a full range. You know, like, okay, you read sports, you read um, any inspirational book, you read science, you read all of it. And every time, no, please don't do that. You have to sit down, do some exercises. Like I said, passion comes before this. So you have to sit down and see what you really want to read. Because that could also give you some of those moments where you are able to pinpoint what is going on, right? So like, for instance, if you like reading science books, so just read science books, you know, like and become very focused when you read, very mindful when you do that. 
Second is turn hurt into healing for other. Like try if like let's say example science. You you are a science person, right? So see how science, uh, the knowledge you have gained or you have experienced through your work, can help somebody to heal. You know differently or more uh, through your whatever you're trying to do or research or something, you know, just, just see and do it from outside the box. Don't, don't put yourself still in the, um, let's say if you're working or a research or in a lab, just don't keep yourself. So you need to go outside because these are the things you're trying to find out more than who you are, right? Cultivate all gratitude and altruism. So this is a very in, in itself. So you have to cultivate that little bit of curiosity factor in you, like how, you are going to be um, working on this journey and what you're getting out of it. And gratitude, yes, of course, you have to be grateful for what you already have. Let's say you are a successful scientist. Um, yeah, you have to be gratitude. You have to be in gratitude for that, right? So you should be thankful for that, that you are already a scientist. Now you're moving on to finding something more about you and that's how you're working on it. So gratitude works very good. And I think you should start, um, you can always start keeping a gratitude journal if you want. Altruism, yeah, of course. You have for the connection of yourself with the other people, you have to find a way where you are resonating to find a cause and work to, towards it. Listen to what other people appreciate about you. So many people, because of we get so much influenced by so many external factors, we tend to overlook when the people are saying, Oh, you talk so well, oh, your messages are so good, oh, you dress so well, oh, you know, those little things, oh, you look beautiful today. So we tend to overlook those compliments which have been coming our way um, more than once. So start paying attention to those. Start listening to when people, you are with people, how they perceive you, you know, what they tell about you. How do they feel when they're in your company? Some people are very pleasant. You say, wow, I love talking to you. So, um, I, I mean, being a coach, I was always told that you have such pleasant energy around you that we love talking to you and sharing our problems when I was, I used to be with my friends when I didn't realize. So you have to start paying attention to something which is about you, which is different from what everybody you know usually says and there could be some non-genuine uh, compliments as well but there could be some genuine compliments coming your way too number five find and build your community yes you can definitely you do that you know um community is you should not do it right away you should take your time like once you are able to settle down in the things you have worked upon then you can start building upon your community um you should not just do it right i just put it over here these are the one of the things but you should not also blindly form a community so a lot many people they think oh i have achieved this let me form a community let me start something doing you know and they don't have any vision about it they are experimenting with it you know like they say oh i know this much and i'll see what you have to say what you so they are also trying to gather the data from other people for their own sense of purpose but that's not good so you would not that will not lead you anywhere so after doing those really steps and understanding of yourself then you should go out and build a community and tell your story yeah this is how i was this is what uh, i was able to achieve and you should be very comfortable in sharing your story right so like what you formerly were doing and now why are you doing what you are doing so what comes from the passion and why comes as i always say uh, <laughs> for the purpose so it becomes easier on you to share your story then and lastly, so I really wanted to clarify one thing to all of you that uh, this is very important to understand. Pleasures, uh, you can be, there can be many pleasures like from uh, with the age and time and they can change with age and time. You can have many pleasures like uh, yesterday you like something different car, today you like different car and by, by the age you are 70, you are liking a different car. So that is, that is all pleasure because it's giving you immense happiness inside, right? and a joyful feeling that's all good passions you can just have one or three you should not be saying that i have 100 passions like you're talking about your hobbies not your passions right so be very careful what your passion and a hobby is right so you i hope after this um little workshop you are able to understand the difference between a hobby and a passion purpose purpose is just one and only one 
And that is for your highest good because now you know yourself pretty well. Now you have gone through the stages of pleasure's passions and are, now you're talking about your purpose, what you need to do and how you need to do. And that is good to, not only for you and it is good for everybody around you. So that's what your purpose is. So that has uh, led you to full fleshed. Now you can um, execute what your purpose is and you can help the way you want to. So I hope this was a um, interesting workshop for you all because I had been saying this three piece for a very long time and um, and I'll see you in next um, uh, topic and uh, till then thank you so much for your time today take care.